beds. The wind blew them off of the car. We had this hole covered we could get under it. Tuck it under us. It's cold. The gravel and the sand would beat us in the face because we couldn't sleep without it. We'd cover up our heads. Hi, my name is Jessica, and today we're going to be talking about the Dirty Thirties, also known as the Dust Bowl. This was a period of severe dust storms that greatly damaged the American and Canadian prairies. And today we're going to be covering how it happened. So this includes weather factors along with poor farming techniques, who it affected, and also the recovery programs put in place by the government to assure that this never happens again. Now, the Dust Bowl was created by a perfect combination of poor farming techniques and weather patterns. In the 1930s, weather patterns over the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans shifted. The Pacific grew cooler than normal and the Atlantic became warmer. That was enough to weaken and change the direction of the jet stream. There is an air current that usually carries moisture from the Gulf of Mexico up to the Great Plains. When it reaches the Rockies, it dumps rain. However, when the jet stream moves south, the rain never reached the Great Plains. The change in direction of air current brought four waves of droughts, one right after another. They occurred in 1930 to 1931, 1934, 1936, and 1939 to 1940. However, many felt like it was one long drought because re affected regions never got the chance to recover before the next drought hit. Coupled with this, another large factor in the dust storms was that farmers didn't know or didn't understand the ecology of the plains. This was coupled with a rapid mechanization of farming techniques, which meant that it was easier to over-cultivate without having time to see the effects or damage that was being done. Many farmers began to use small gasoline tractors and the combine harvester. This meant that the soil lost its richness and the 5.2 million acres of grass that once protected the topsoil of the Midwest became cultivated farmland. So when the drought killed off these crops, the high winds blew the remaining topsoil away. This soil turned to dust, which the winds blew around in huge clouds that blackened the sky. These choking billows of dust, named black blizzards or black rollers, traveled across the country, reaching as far as the East Coast and striking cities such as New York City and Washington, D.C. Here. Listen to an anonymous recording from July 28, 1940, which describes the terrifying dust storms that occurred. It was in the early and late summer, I believe it was. It come a, what we call a red dust storm, which come from the west, from the red country west of us. And it just, it done lots of damage to small buildings, blowed them completely away and tore the, the roofs off of the larger buildings, come out and blowed the windows out of the houses turn cars over and things like that, a straight wind, no twister to it. And the dust was so thick that you could see nothing at all, you just absolutely couldn't see through it at all. Just dark as it could possibly be. And it was that way for about 14 hours, it blowed steady that way, there seemed like a no let up at all, as strong as it could be, you couldn't walk in. I was living in a little old flimsy made house that I didn't think it was too strong. However, it withered the storm almost completely. It blew two of the window lights out. And the next morning after the storm was over, the dust was a quarter of an inch thick all over everything in the house. And, uh, the first and only storm of the kind that I ever saw in that country. There wasn't a drop of rain with it, no thunder and lightning or nothing, just a plain old dust storm. Dust storms like these had devastating effects in the Midwest. Many of these families migrated from Oklahoma to California and other states to find work. However, they found that the Great Depression had rendered economic conditions there little better than those that they had left. The Dust Bowl forced tens of thousands of families to abandon their farms and left over 500,000 people homeless. Many farmers who chose to stay often had their mortgages foreclosed by banks as there was nothing to farm and all of the dirt had been swept away. Some residents of the plains, especially in Kansas and Oklahoma, fell ill and died of dust pneumonia and malnutrition. This crisis was documented by photographers, musicians, and authors, many of which were hired during the Great Depression by the federal government. This was one of the things that helped recovery because it raised awareness around the crisis. Uh, one of the most known artists was Dorothy Lange, who captured the most known images of destitute pea pickers in California okay. and mother. 
These pictures expressed the struggles of the people uh, caught by the Dust Bowl and raised awareness in other parts of the country of its reach and human cost. Along with raising awareness through art, the Depression has played a large role in the recovery from the Dust Bowl. After the inauguration of President Franklin Roosevelt, uh, the government became less passive and actually wanted to aid more and uh, take more control over the people. This provided a framework for drought relief programs in the Great Plains. These programs had a variety of goals, all of which were aimed at the reduction of drought impacts and vulnerability, some of which were aimed at providing emergency supplies, cash, and livestock feed and transport to maintain the basic functioning of livelihoods and farms and ranches. Others were aimed at establish, ab, establishing healthcare facilities or government-based markets for farm goods, higher tariffs, and loan funds. This was helping to um, aid farmers in reestablishing their businesses. These programs helped families survive until 1941, when most areas of Can in Canada and the United States began receiving near-normal rainfalls. This, along with uh, the beginning of World War II, alleviated uh, lots of the economic problems asso associated with the crisis in the 1930s. In the end, families survived through a combination of willpower, stamina, humor, pride, and above all, optimism. This is summarized from one survivor who, is, who says we have faith in the future. We are here to stay. Thank you.